Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is your boy, Jim Austin, coming to you from Fort Worth, Texas, here in the historic Stockyards. We are here at uh, my recording studios. We call the Stockyards Podcast Recording Studios, and we're being brought to you and powered by Jim Austin Online. Um, this is a... Um, uh, uh, Jim Austin Online brings you the latest and greatest events that go on in North Texas, and we're about live music and just uh, things that are happening in the area. But um, we just created this podcast studio here about mm, four or five months ago, and we are making available The Austin File, which is a show that was developed for me personally. Uh, a lot of people know I've been doing commercial real estate for probably 40 years. And the Austin File brings you the latest information of what goes on in North Texas. We also talk to you about the, the uh, happenings in commercial real estate, but we interview people of interest. And uh, we look for people that are making things happen in the world. And uh, my show has just expanded through a relationship of a friend of mine, you know, Barbara Terry. Barbara represents over 400 authors, and we are going to be talking to them about what goes on with them. So today we have a special guest with us coming in from Florida. It's uh, Reverend Martin uh, Dunn. Good, good, good morning, uh, Reverend Dunn. Good morning, Jim. Great to see you. I wish I could be with you in person today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we, we can make that happen. Either I'll fly there or you fly here, but the COVID has uh, shut a lot of people down about being concerned about flying. And uh, I consider myself a, a, a guy that loves to travel and go places. And I've been down to your area at least 10 to 12 times in my life. So what, how are you doing today? Oh, doing great. I'm counting my blessings. It's starting to cool down a little bit around here, and everyone's just praying that this COVID nightmare ends sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. But we're yeah. always trying to find the positive, and we definitely have a lot of positive here in Florida. Yeah, well, you, um, you're an author, author of several children's uh, books, and what could a priest know about marriage? And um, I guess in my opinion or thought, y'all should know a lot about marriage because you can, you do a lot of services uh, for sure. But we're going to talk about your book and uh, what you're doing right now and how your book betters the world in relationships, sir. So tell us a little bit about your background, you know, where you went to school, where you grew up, and uh, what's going on now. Well, I've always been blessed to be right here in South Florida. I never wanted to leave. I chose to stay here for college, got a great education, and was always recognizing the gift and the potential of the moment to make the most out of everything we have. I really believe we're only here once, and once we lose that second, we're never going to get it back. So I was always striving to have the best of everything. And for so many years, I wasn't listening to what was best according to God. And 10 years ago, I finally said, okay, God, you win. I'll begin my preparations for the ministry. And since then, I've seen how that's connected with everything in my life, because I've always felt happiest, always felt most in peace, helping others, trying to lift others up, make them recognize their unique value a universal value yes but how they're supposed to make a particular contribution and how you can always turn something bad into something good and i most recently been blessed to do that during this quarantine lockdown because all of a sudden i had this opportunity to put down on a paper my lessons learned a lot of them the hard way some of them in ministry some of them in the classroom but all of my practical insights i put in this easy to read book to help people have the most meaningful relationships possible in any state of life. Well, are you are you uh, ministering a church uh, a church in Florida right now? 
yes, right now I'm at uh, St. Joan of Arc Parish in Boca Raton, and St. Joan of Arc knew what it was like to give your life for others, to want the best of freedom for everyone to enjoy, to be the people they were meant to be. So I find it very, very beneficial to be right here at this parish right now. I have a relationship with Boca Raton. I uh, went to the Super Bowl uh, one year oh. and had the pleasure of uh, staying in Boca Raton and uh, attending the Super Bowl, um, you know, probably uh, 25, 24, 25 years ago. I know Denver was playing in that Super Bowl, but uh, yeah, that's quite a sit. That's quite a city, Boca Raton, because even when I was at American Express, I got a chance to visit that city. So it list, seems like everybody has a yacht. It seems like it, but, <laughs> or at least they like to pretend they have a yacht. Okay. And, and again, I even talk about what people think is important versus what actually is important. I describe in my book how I pursued worldly wealth. I thought, oh, this is what's going to make me happy. And it just led to a brick wall. I felt bored. I felt the meaninglessness of it. It could be nice to have those things. I have nothing against it but you're only going to find true value in being the person you're meant to be. And striving, that's the key word, striving to get along with the people you have to interact with day in, day out, those who want the best for you, those who drive you crazy, and everyone in between. In Florida, we got everybody. <laughs> it's got a lot crowded throughout my lifetime. It used to be a sleepy little area, but now it's uh, not so much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why, um, and thank you for you doing God's work, okay, because your commitment, I know, is there by, you know, looking through, through your book and, and, and seeing what your commitment is. So um, let's talk about the book, you know, uh, what, what brought the book about, and uh, um, let's restate the title, let people know where they can find the book and then where your passion came to write a book such as this. Absolutely, again, it all began in this moment of prayer. I can't exaggerate about this. I had this rare opportunity for silent prayer and then it just struck me like lightning. What could a priest know about marriage? It really just hit me and everything happened within a moment, less than a second, the notion to write the book, to call it this title, and I even visualized it already in the bookstore shelves. And I'm really grateful that through Waldorf, it's already available to all these retailers. It's already available online. It's available in hardcover, paperback, audio, electronic. Wow. I, I've just been so amazed with how within a matter of a few months, it's gone from just this moment of inspiration to being everywhere. And I'm so excited about that because I really believe this book contains lessons on how everybody can become the best they can be. Somebody told me many years ago, he was about 90 years old, it's not about being the best, it's about being the best you can be and the peace that comes with that. And I don't waste any time, I get right to the point, I get right to the issue, it's like, okay, how can I become better? I recognize everyone's time is valuable, so I get right to it. And I have it broken into three basic levels about akin to constructing a house. First, you gotta clear the land. First, you gotta get rid of all the clutter and stuff and junk that keeps you from seeing things clearly, seeing how you're supposed to live in the moment, how you're supposed to respond in those moments, recognizing those moments as stepping stones to become better and better. You can't have meaningful relationships, whether it's marriage or otherwise, until you're the best you can be. And from there, you're able to start that relationship. You're able to simultaneously help that other person be their best while they continue to refine you. That's something that I used to be intimidated by. And I express in this book, it's nothing to fear, it's something to celebrate, that the growth continues and deepens and develops throughout a lifetime. And I offer many specific examples from outstanding couples. And again, once you have that foundation forward, then you can start building. And again, recognizing how everything you do together in relationships, at peace with who you are, can have profound impacts 
on everybody around you. You could be this light for people everywhere, even strangers. And God knows we need this now. Right now, it seems that everyone's so divided, so suspicious, so angry, so hurt. And many of those reasons are justified. And although we would love to change the past, I elaborate on the fact that while we can't change the past, we can learn from it. We can use that resolve from our past mistakes to make sure that the present and the future are truly as great as possible. And that, in a very real sense, redeems the past. So I offer this book as a sign of hope for everyone, that it's never too late. Even with things you know you've messed up with, even with the damage that has been done, it's not too late to do things right from this moment forward. And I really feel this is a book sorely needed at a time where people are longing for peace and longing for true life-giving relationships. You know, um, you know your points of fact about your book are very important. It's never too late. It's no. never too late to change your situation. It's just identifying what the problem is. And as you said, clear the land to get moving in the right direction. So I know your book is inspiring people to connect, do better, and move forward. If someone wanted to reach out to you, give give us your contact information. You know, if oh. they want to visit your church, if they want to talk to you, if they want to email you, won't you share that? I mean, that's very important right now because I like to think that my show is worldwide. So there could be someone from any part of the world that just got connected by your path of this book. What could a priest know about marriage? And you know, in everyday life, marriage is so in important into the relationship. I always felt growing up, I need to find me a good wife because having a relationship, you know, and uh, it makes me enjoy life so much better. But uh, go ahead and share about where people can reach out to you. Agreed completely. I created this one-stop shop, fathermartinbooks.com. It has everything. It has my contact information, it has all my social media handles. It has descriptions and photographs of all of my books. And it not just goes into detail about what could a priest know about marriage, but it has the stories about all the children's books I've written since. And for example, we're having the children's book coming out in a couple days about marriage. And my hope is that parents with their children can read these books together and grow closer to each other and understanding their value and their meaning and their potential. But everything's right there. And I would love to hear from anyone who may be struggling with that hope. Our hope has been challenged this year. A lot has been challenged this year, but it's all right there. Where to reach me, how to reach me, various ways, and how you could even get a hold of these books so that you can have these messages of hope with you all the time. I'll tell you the truth, that's what's most exciting about these books for me, that you know, I can only do so much during a given day. And it's nice to know I may be asleep at three in the morning and somebody is reading one of the books, getting hope and inspiration. It's really incredible and I couldn't be more grateful. Saving lives, saving lives, you know, because, you know, um, parents and children, and the struggles that we're going through right now with people cannot feed their family and, you know, depression, you know, depression is a, such a terrible thing. And, and, and I feel by just the information that you're sharing can help someone deal with, with, with uh, depression for sure. You know, so, Absolutely. Yeah. And I can relate to my own struggle. Again, I think if everyone's honest with themselves, they've had these low moments, these dark moments, these hopeless moments, but God is always reaching out to us, always. And it's just up to us to accept it. And again, I'm proof also that it's never too late. I thought that you had to enter the seminary right out of high school. I did not enter until I was 30. And I wasn't meant to enter until I was 30. And again, just seeing the beauty of how everything, even the bad stuff, even the scary stuff, even the uncertain stuff can connect if we have this openness to loving as best we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love, loving each other. And 
and accepting uh, each other as we are. You know, I live in a vacuum. I don't see color. And I can tell by looking into your eyes that you don't see color. You just, you know, you, you, your heart is open and um, you're, you're saving souls and, 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 and being, being involved. Um, what, what are some of the other things that you feel that someone could benefit by reading your book? And uh, for sure. I believe this book's about opening eyes. And one particular way is opening eyes to the excitement of the moment. And I'm not just talking about the bad moments, I'm talking about the blase routine drudgery moments to say, wow, this can be my chance to make a difference. And I illustrate with my example and the example of others, how I did let some of those moments slip away because I'm like, oh, this isn't too big of a deal or, oh, I'll have another chance. But the reality is everything could be like, wow, now's my chance. Now is my chance. And even when you feel nothing, even when you feel like you did not make a difference, the reality is you could have made that profound impact on someone else's life. And again, that's what matters the most. Life is too short. And to say, wow, I had this positive influence on somebody, which allowed them to have this butterfly effect of being positive to somebody else, who allowed them to be positive to somebody else. And it all started with you. It's to recognize that beauty and potential. Again, we're only here so many years and why waste time? Like I did waste time on things that really weren't important or on grudges or, or petty things instead of saying, wow, this is my chance to make a difference because that is a universal longing. That is a deep longing. I am uniquely valuable. I am playing this complementary role in the world that needs me. And it may happen in the most unexpected ways. And that's why I'm just so excited. And again, don't write anything off. Oh, this is too difficult. The odds are too great. And that's the other thing you're hearing about in the news today. It's like, oh, things are just so bad. Just the story on this books happening so quickly, happening so easily. I'm not going to lie. I attribute that to God. And God is necessary now more than ever to bring us all together, to reconcile us like never before. And if we have this openness to God's love and God's power and our unique role to cooperate with it, to be a channel of it, I really think everything can change overnight. And boy, do things need to change. How much is your book, if I may ask? Well, I have to say it's going to be different in every single retailer and okay. i don't know how they go about calculating it but i would suggest people shop around find the best deal i've done that myself and i've seen huge price ranges between the various online retailers and and the bookstores so that's my advice for people is this uh, your first book or you have other publications well, What Could a Priest Know About Marriage is my first book. Okay. It came out a few days ago, and it's really remarkable how the subsequent children books have come about because the time came to design the cover, and I gave Waldorf my suggestions, and from that they said, have you considered writing children's books? And I said, no, <laughs> but I can't lie. It was literally the easiest thing I've ever done in my entire life because I also minister to the school, and I love ministering to these children who, especially this year, have been so heroic in their struggles with this pandemic, with all the negative news. They have been so joyful, so inspirational, looking for the positive. And that is why these <coughs> children books were so easy to put together. And I'm just so excited that now there are so far five other children's books in the works about how much God loves you, how to live virtuously, how to have great relationships, how to have true teamwork to do great, great things. And they're going to be coming out in the coming days and weeks. And I never in a million years thought I was going to be speaking to you or anybody about books that I wrote, but it's all blessing from God. It's all my proof that everybody can do great things with their lives, even when they have their doubts and fears. And I show in the books how to conquer the fears, moment to moment, big ways, little ways. I give this recipe on how you can do it. And I do it in a very straightforward, plain way. 
Well, I know Barbara um, Terry <clears throat> Waldorf Books is is amazing, and she's about children. So, um, knowing that this is just hitting the, the stands and getting out there, this is exciting for me and my show to help spread the word and love Barbara and what she does. So, we've agreed to take the message to the people, and I'm sure someone will see this and go out and secure the book because uh, you got a great publishing company and I look for big things and further uh, opportunity to read, you know, what's on your mind, sir. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm grateful for them. I, I did not <laughs> want just any publisher and I was very selective and I couldn't be happier that Waldorf decided to take a leap of faith in me. And thank you also for doing the same and for helping me get this message out there. Yeah, you can uh, <clears throat> catch this on Jim Austin online and just hit the tab podcast. And uh, we uh, are syndicated, so we'll be on Spotify and Facebook, and we'll just push it out there. We're recording it right now. <clears throat> oh, that little cough. And um, we will share this, you know, throughout my network. And it's been a pleasure talking with you. Uh, give your contact information so we'll know how to reach you absolutely <laughs> excuse me thank you for all the great things you're doing thank you for lifting people up through this great work well my producer said jim wrap it up this has been a great conversation 20 thank minutes you. goes real quickly and um hey father martin it's just been my pleasure to talk with you i look forward to meeting you one day I look forward to meeting you. It's been my pleasure as well. I'll keep you in my prayers. Okay. And I'll put you on my uh, list to receive my newsletter and we'll just stay in touch. So if we Absolutely. need to, at any time we need to do an update, just give us a call. Thank you. Thank okay. you for everything. Okay. You have a good day. You too. Thank God you. bless. God bless.